this. Give me a break. Yeah. He, he knows that he has the authority. We've documented it for him. I've read to him the law, myself, to the president, read him the provisions of the law and said, Mr. President, please take action. The law House Speaker Mike Johnson is referring to is Section 212F of the Immigration and Nationality Act, which says, quote, Whenever the president finds that the entry of any aliens or of any class of aliens into the United States would be detrimental to the interests of the United States, he may, by proclamation and for such period as he shall deem necessary, suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens or migrants or non-immigrants or impose on the entry of aliens any restrictions he may deem to be appropriate. Okay, sounds kind of cut and dry, right? Here's the problem. Former President Trump tried this. His efforts didn't hold up in court. Back in November of 2018, the former president invoked this law to deny asylum to any migrants illegally entering at the southern border. A federal judge blocked the effort, saying Trump's executive order conflicted with existing immigration law, which says that people have to be physically present in the U.S. to seek asylum, regardless of their immigration status or how they entered. An appeals court sided with the lower court, and the U.S. Supreme Court denied the Trump administration's request to block the ruling. So, Congress can change the law. The courts evaluate the laws currently on the books, which brings me back to my original question. Can President Biden shut the border down? Can he just better enforce the laws currently on the books? Let's ask John Sandwig, former acting ICE director and an attorney who specializes in cross-border business, immigration, national security, Thanks so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. All right. So question one, can President Biden simply shut down the border? Well, he can't simply shut it down, Dan, but he could arguably do something similar to what Trump did after the court invalidated that prior attempt you just discussed. That would be something like the Remain in Mexico program, where people come in, you give them a court document, a court date. You say, here's your court date. Now you wait in Mexico until that court date is called. Now, but remember, couple of things about that. One is Mexico has to agree to take those people back. And even during the Trump administration, Mexico didn't say we'll take everyone back. They were selective. They certain populations, nationalities, Russians, Haitians, amongst others, they wouldn't take back. Um, and then secondly, though, it can't just be, it's not just a simple, I'm closing the border again. You have to have some process by which those asylum claims will be heard in the future. So no, it's not quite, it's not as black and white as people are making it seem. Okay, so I appreciate that, that sort of nuanced answer, which is, yes, there's some more that President Biden could do, but no, he can't just close the border, which brings us back then to this legislation. Um, what, what do you make of the legislation? I mean, look, I thought it was a big statement that the union for the Border Patrol agents came out in support of it. Yeah, listen, that is a big statement. I have worked with that union closely. Uh, they are not, uh, they are very hawkish, let's just say that. <laughs> Uh, they did endorse President Trump, then their endorsement is actually a big deal. Dan, look, this is a very significant bill, and I think everyone's focused on this border closing thing. And really, that's probably the least important from a border security, you know, not the least important, but but one of the, not the most important part of this bill, I'll say that. Uh, this bill would do two big things. One, it would make the, the standard go up for when you can get asylum. But much more importantly, as we've talked a lot about, it would create new processes by which the government could bypass the backlogged immigration courts and make a quick determination on whether someone has an asylum claim, valid claim or not, and then deport them if they fail to present a claim. That's the key question we all should be focused on. Look, yep. we had 300,000 people cross our border in December. We physically, it's very difficult to stop them. The question is, what do we do once they're here? And there's some really big provisions of this bill that would answer that question in a way that I think would really promote border security in dramatic ways. Donald Trump in the last couple of hours uh, speaking out about this, and I think laying out the roadmap for why uh, some on the uh, right end of the Republican spectrum are now opposing this bill. Let's listen. And you have Republicans itching to sign off on this in the Senate. I mean, well, it's hard to believe because I think it probably would mean the end of their career. This is a, uh, a Democrat trap. It's a trap for Republicans that would be so stupid, so foolish to sign a bill like this. This bill can't be signed. The, the end of their careers. I think that that's what uh, some are, are worried about. No, really. I mean, I think that's the yeah. issue is they're worried about the end of their careers as opposed to trying to shore up our border. 
Well, look, I think that's absolutely right. There's political concerns. I'll tell you this. This is a very conservative bill, as you said. It raises the asylum standard. It pours billions of dollars into detention and ICE and CBP efforts. Uh, and more importantly, it creates new processes that bypass the critical issue, which is the backlogged immigration courts. This is a very pro-enforcement yeah. bill, and I think the Border Patrol Union really resolves well, any ambiguity about that point. Well, that's the most—I I, I, got to tell you, I felt the same way when I saw that. That tells you a lot. So when— Donald Trump or anyone else says it's a democratic trap, it's this, it's that. There's a reason that the Border Patrol Union is supporting this. John Sandwick, thank you so much for coming on the program. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.